Cristina de Four Icon. Este, tu familia es muy importante para ti. ¿Qué se sintió que te acompañaran estos días en México y que vieran todo el cariño y el apoyo que te tienen los mexicanos? Um, yeah, my family, we had a great time together. Um, we had some dinner um, at this one restaurant. Everybody came. We were all dancing and having a great time. Um, I, I don't really get to see them that often anymore because obviously I'm on the different side of the different side of the globe. But to be able to come and, and reunite here um, and have that night with them, it was a it was a, it was a great experience. Front row of the center, right behind you. Hi, man. Congratulations for the win. Thank you. Two questions. Uh, did you meet your expectations in terms of the energy, the atmosphere of the people, and did you have additional pressure playing in Mexico City? Um, yeah, I mean, the expectation. I guess I didn't, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I was, uh, I was really excited to see, but um, I guess everyone blew my expectations away. I couldn't imagine the, the, this much love um, being shown to myself and you know my family. It was, uh, it was truly incredible, and I was happy to see all the fans and get to interact and be able to sign autographs and um, take pictures with people. And, uh, you know, it, I can feel the love, and, and it's very much reciprocated, so, yeah. Second row, all, all the way to the right. Hi, Jaime. Ivan Araujo, de Agencia JRF. Yesterday, we were talking uh, with, your, with your partners, and they, uh, well, really mentioned about your mature with the game. So how would you describe on your words, your style, and what do you expect of this second year in the NBA? Um, great question. I think uh, I, I try to slow the game down. Um, if you guys have followed me since uh, uh, I was in you know high school and college, those coaches would tell you that I was really, really fast, and I was almost too fast. So I, I worked really hard to slow my game down and Um, you know, take it one step at a time, not, not do anything too fast, be under control at all times. So I think that's kind of how I try to look at my game is try to be under control. Um, and yeah, I, yeah. Boring. We're going to go all the way to the left, four rows back. Okay. Jaime, good night and congrats for the, this victory. Yesterday we talked about the opportunity you have to make history now. You are history here, uh, the first Mexican player who win an NBA City, Mexico City game. How do you feel with that? And in the future, what, what do you expect for this? Um, yeah, great great to make history here. Happy to be in the books. Uh, I thought it was an overall team win. Um, and you know, for us, we just got to continue that, um, continue that process throughout the rest of the season, how we play today. We're gonna go two, two over to the middle in the same row. Hi, Jaime. How's it going? Emilio Barrientos for El Silo de Durango. How does it feel to have such big mentors like Kevin Love and Jimmy Butler and the same team? Uh, it's great. Uh, they're two great vets. Um, you know, they, they taught me so much about the game of basketball, what it means to be a pro. Um, and I really couldn't have asked for uh, two better guys. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're really incredible the way that they take care of their bodies and they approach the game. And uh, I feel as if, you know, this is my second year now, but in my first year, I learned so much from them. So. Great. Last question in the middle, pur purple shirt. Hi, hi, man. Hector Lazari for Claro Sports. Uh, I don't know if you see it from the court, but a lot of kids were wearing your number 11 jersey, all, all the styles of, of the jersey. Mm. What can you say about that, that you're inspiring the next generation of players here? Um, yeah, I think it's great. Um, hopefully I can inspire a lot of kids down here to, you know, pick up a basketball and pursue that as their dream and their passion. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll see more more Mexicans playing in the NBA. Um, and, you know, it's got to start somewhere. So, uh, and it takes time. So, if you know, me being here um, can inspire those kids to play basketball and follow their dream and show that they got really great talent. Um, and then, you know, one day they can be just like me. So it's, it's really amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, Tim and Cristina for Icon. Uh, you enjoy a lot of food. In Mexico, the tradition of the altar of the death It has many elements, one of which is the, the beloved favorite food. What would be or what would you like to be in, in an altar for you? For me? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's, hell, what a first question to ask. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Some type of, of Mexican dish. I love churros. I'm not going to even stunt. So if you just pile a million churros in there for me, 
I think I'll be, I'll be, I'll be fine in the afterlife. Four rows back, uh, right in the center. Hi, Jimmy. Uh, this is your third time here in Mexico. How different is it from the first and now? Is it uh, something, is it uh, common or is it always like, do you feel butterflies or anything special? Honestly, I feel, I feel right at home whenever I'm here. I go out to the streets and, and do everything that the locals do. I go eat at the restaurants. Mm, I work on my Spanish as often as I can. Uh, I, I'm comfortable here. I love coming here. Altitude and the traffic, we'll talk about that another time. But outside of that, uh, it's a great city. All the way to the left, four rows back. Jimmy, uh, congrats for this victory. And yesterday, uh, we saw you at Reforma. <laughs> enjoying Dia de Muertos, and you paint your face <laughs> like a Katrin. How do you feel to do that, and what is the most important thing you look in, in this tradition in Mexico? Um, I have so much honor for the people that are not here with us any longer. Um, I, I feel like I've dealt with that in, in the past year at a, at, a, at a different level. So uh, to be able to take parts of that, be out there on the streets, get my face painted. Um, I got a lot of love for that tradition here. Um, I like your jacket too, I have that same jacket by the way. But um, I think it's a, it's a hell of a holiday and it's great and I'm glad I could be here to play on this day and get out there and get some food and uh, paint my face like a child. Center, uh, third row back. Hi Jimmy, Hector Lazari for Clara Sports. What were the differences from the previous times here in Mexico with the crowd? Do you felt it more pro heat and the, uh, about the impact of Jaime being your team? Thing? Yeah, um, they love Jaime here for some odd reason. It gotta be because he's Mexican, but they definitely love him. Uh, the, the crowd showed up and showed out. We had a lot of fans in here tonight. Uh, it's, it's been different for me every time that I've been here, but uh, I've been here with so many different players. Um, I've grown as a player. Hell, I'm 35 years old now, so I'm known a little bit more, but it still gives me butterflies to hear everybody cheer for me in a foreign country. Last question here on the right, two goes back. Hi, Jimmy, Ivan Araujo from Agencia JRF. Well, you were enjoying the festivity uh, those days, these days. So do you think this was just a regular season game or there is something special about the night's game? It is a regular season game, but it's always special to be able to play in a foreign country, a great city like Mexico City at that, in, in front of some incredible fans. Uh, on a day <clears throat> like today, uh, I just love the fact that we get to be here and hoop in front of all of you. And um, I don't ever take that for granted. We don't ever take that for granted. And uh, Jaime got to be here and do everything um, for, the, for the country of, of Mexico here in Mexico City. So. I'll take care of my fellow Mexican. Thanks, Jimmy. You know it. Hi, Bam. Diego Salgado from Viva Basket. First of all, congratulations on the win. I want to know, with all the experience that you're getting from Mexico City and the crowd and all that stuff, in a next scenario when NBA gets a Mexico City team because of the expansion, are you be willing to play in here? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess that's a Pat Riley question. Um, I love Miami, uh, but you know it is a great atmosphere here. Uh, I feel like that was a question for Hami more than me because this is kind of like his homecoming. All the way to the right, second row. Hi, I'm Ivan Araujo from Agencia JRF. Uh, well, yesterday uh, you mentioned that the main objective was the win, and well, on the other Muertos with Jaime, it was a plus. But not only you get the win not only was with Jaime and not only was on the other Muertos, also you had a hell of a match. So what's the final feeling or, or, or the final emotion that yeah. you will take away from Mexico? And how, what's the key for that success and confidence that you bring into the game? Uh, so to start with uh, Mexico, you know, this is my third time being here and you know, all three times has been great energy. It's been a great crowd. You know, when you walk in, you feel the the, the intensity in the environment. Um, like I said before, Mexico has a, a great environment for us. Uh, obviously, we had Jaime, uh this year, so that was an added plus. But uh, you know, it's just a great a great environment, great arena. Um, so 
you know, I feel like they will have a team here one day. Uh, second question, my teammates got me going early, and then it just is a snowball effect from there. Four rows back in the center. Hi, I'm Emilio Barrientos for El Siglo de Durango. Uh, we talk about 32 points, 14 rebounds, and two assists. How does it feel to get this huge win here in Mexico City? Uh, well, the, the altitude is uh, different. <laughs> uh, but like I said, I think we're not to jinx it. We're 3-0 we're uh, playing here. So obviously, I, I, we love playing here. Uh, I feel like the, the Mexican ch culture loves El Heat. Uh, so hopefully, we, we get to come back. Next question is the gentleman right next to him on the left. Bam, hi. Luis Pabon from Cloud Sports. Uh, by halftime, you already had more field goal attempts uh, than three of the last four games. Of course, you had a career high on three pointers also. Uh, what can you tell us about you know, just being more aggressive and uh, offensively? Uh, like I said, my teammates got me going from the jump. And then, you know, we're pros, man. Once we see the ball going a couple times, it, it, it becomes like an ocean. Uh, <clears throat> and then you just get in a flow and you just get locked in. And it's just, it just feels like the ball is going to go in every time for you. Last question. Right here in the center, a third, three rows back. Hola, I'm Hector Lasso for Claro Sports. Do you remember a game, I know, of Kentucky with the USA basketball or even with the Heat in the previous finals, that the crowd was so into what another player was doing, uh, or a particular player like Jaime today, when he was sobbing in, when he was grabbing a rebound, everybody was cheering. Do you remember something like that? I mean, uh, I had Dwayne Wade on my team as a rookie, and that was the time when he came back to Miami. So, you know, when I first got there, everybody kept asking me, was D-Wade coming back? First of all, I'm a rookie. I don't know. That's not my job. Uh, but this is probably the second thing closest to that. Um, and it, I, I'm glad Jaime got that, that experience, got that exposure, because I feel like uh, he's going to always want to come back here because he's going to know he's going to have a crowd behind him. Thanks, Pam. Thank you. Coach Spolstra, it was uh, a good night for NBA for Miami Heat. Uh, what are your thoughts after this beautiful game in Mexico City? We had a great time, uh, and that was the players, uh, the staff, uh, everybody alike. Um, we, we love coming down here. We love the fans. Um, the environment out there was amazing. Um, we had a couple nights, so we got here a night uh, before. Uh, the last time we were here, we only had one night, um, so we were able to get out and walk around and enjoy the sights. Uh, and the most important thing, we were able to get a win. Uh, so. Uh, we're pleased about the last uh, three days. Next question, all the way to the right, second row. Hi, Coach. Uh, first of all, congratulations for, for the win. So basically, the crowd was amazed because of the team. So, and well, you had hackers on your team. So that was a plus for the hit because basically all the game was yours. So how did you manage it mentally? Our guys love to compete. You know, we're coming off a, a disappointing uh, loss the other night, so we were able to uh, fly in uh, to the city, have a great practice yesterday, a film session, get to work, focus on the task at hand. And um, our guys like competing, like uh, being out there in front of, you know, fans like this. And um, we were able to get the win, and uh, Jaime had his moments uh, in there as well. Third row center. I think Hector Lasseri for Clara Sports. Coach, first, uh, do you feel the crowd was a little bit different than the previous game you were here in Mexico because of Jaime? And also, if you felt he was a little bit more nervous or no, extra excited he, about it? He wasn't nervous. Um, you know, he's an experienced uh, player. He's mature. He's been in a lot of tough environments in, in college. I know he's excited uh, to be here. Um, you know, to answer your question, yes, every time he touches the ball, you could hear the, the crowd noise go up. Um, but that was fun. You know, it was a fun uh, uh, couple of days for him, and it was a good couple of days for us. All right. Fourth row to the left, second in. Hi, Coach. Luis, Luis Baum from Cloud Sports. Of course, you had some changes in the rotation. You didn't have Kevin uh, Duncan. We saw important minutes from, from guys like Bill Larson. Of course, at the end, uh, Khalil were. What can you tell us about those young guys that are adapting game to game to, to this league? Well, our young guys were uh, 
extremely excited uh, about them, you know, and they've been putting in a great deal of work, but they, uh, they have a talent level, they have a competitive spirit uh, about them. Uh, even though they haven't played uh, big minutes, they're, they're making progress. Uh, so it was good, you know, to see Pella get some action out there. Kalel got uh, in there late, but he's been he's been getting better. He's been getting better in the weight room, getting better uh, in the practices. Uh, I'm pleased with his progress. Uh, and then, you know, we played a little bit of a deeper rotation, you know, tonight. Uh, guys were working on getting their second and third win, um, you know. But I I thought, you know, A B. Uh, uh, Alec, you know, gave us some really good minutes. Uh, you know, he's a pro's pro, and he, he made some big plays, you know, big shots at, at important swing moments during the course of the game. And, uh, you know, he always just stays ready, and uh, and it was great to have him, you know, in a, in a situation like this. Last question, seventh row, second in on the right. Spo Jason Jackson of Miami Heat Broadcasting, nice to see you. Uh, just your thoughts on the rebounding edge, particularly the offensive rebounding that you guys have been talking about over the last couple of days. Yeah, I think, you know, what we talked about was, uh, you know, making a lot more multiple efforts. That was on both sides of the floor. We, you know, we had lost the glass four straight games. That's uh, not characteristic uh, of a Miami Heat team. Uh, and, and we all took it to heart. Um, you know, so there was more multiple efforts. Defensively, I saw a lot of activity. Uh, more pursuits to the glass, and then offensively, you know, more pursuits uh, to get us second chance opportunities, and you know, those uh, those can be relief opportunities, miss shots, get another possession that that can sometimes uh, be deflating for the other team, as we've been on the other side of that. Thanks, right, coach. Thank you.